The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. And welcome to a beautiful Friday, October 5th. And uh, it is another beautiful day at the headquarters of Technical Trading and Investing, TFNN.com. Uh, as always, we start off the show with uh, kind of the equivalent of the little mint that you have at a nice hotel. They just put the little mint on there uh, that you can have before you go to bed at night. And uh, so we start the show off with that little mint. It's a little, easy, a little easier than trying to drop the mint on when everybody's asleep and drooling. So uh, you got to get it started ahead of when people go to sleep. They're in a hurry to leave the hotel next morning. you got to get to them when it's right. I think it's right right at the beginning of our show. And what is today? Today we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first Beatles single. And uh, I've heard a little bit of Beatles last night. I want to thank uh, our wonderful uh, host in the morning, Steve Rhodes. Uh, we had an extra ticket, so we went and saw uh, Joe Cocker and... Uh, uh, last night and had a really good time. He did uh, several Beatles songs and, uh, of course, along with the rest of him. Uh, my favorite, of course, was always You Can Leave Your Hat On. Uh, always a good test of a girlfriend uh, to have her watch nine and a half weeks and see if she wanted to do something. Oh, yeah, Dave Mason was the other guy with him. But uh, old nine and a half weeks, not too bad. I forgot how many songs he'd done uh, for movies, but uh, he uh, sang the... Uh, theme from uh, Officer and a Gentleman and some of the other things he's done in his life. And uh, even uh, even uh, uh, Dave Mason and him uh, did a couple of songs together. It's kind of neat. And uh, I guess uh, Dave doesn't travel very far. Lives down here in Florida somewhere, uh, but uh, was just going to hang out for the next three or four uh, concerts that he had down here in Florida before they headed back up north. Uh, but very good. And of course, uh, like I told uh, our producer before the show, uh, I'd uh, take a busload of Culture Club members and uh, go if they went off a cliff, uh, I probably would not cry as much as uh, Mr. Joe Cocker going off the cliff. Ugh, those horrible 80 bands. Uh, they're haunting me now. He played one of them last week and it's now gotten to my mind like one of those little worms in the Star Trek movie they stuck in the guy's ear. It's it's horrific. Anyway, we're going to have a good day anyway. Uh, I got all that Culture Club stuff out of my, out of my, uh, out of my veins last night, listening to some really good artists perform very good music, uh, without having to dress with a mohawk or, or uh, lots of piercings or all the other stuff that people think make them cool. Uh, but uh, very good night, and uh, thanks again to Steve Rhodes for giving me a kick ticket. I may not have gone. I forgot that uh, all the stuff that he did. Of course, I'll never forget the. 1976 episode of Saturday Night Live with him and G uh, Jim Belushi on the uh, on the stage and uh, Belushi doing it almost spot on imitation of uh, exactly that. But uh, you know we do uh, look at the Beatles 50. We got a lot of uh, uh, we've got a lot of uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, stuff to talk about today, but uh, I'm just thinking a little bit. A lot of uh, milestones actually came up this week. We'll be talking about those on the Tom O'Brien Show at 5:20 Eastern Time tonight. Uh, just a ton of stuff. We got. Uh, uh, I've got some really good stuff. In fact, uh, you always remember the one of turning lead into gold. Uh, not quite lead into gold, but I've got something almost as good. It, it will astound you, especially if you're a gold aficionado. And that's what in the industry is called a tease. I'm going to hold off on you guys until 5.20 tonight for that article. But uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, today, 50 years ago today, Love Me Do was the first uh, uh, record and their first hit. Uh, today, uh, probably not a lot of people uh, looking for that whole Love Me Do thing. Uh, in fact, there's some people out there uh, that would just love to have a little bit of love. And uh, one of those is Zynga, uh, Z-N-G-A, uh, came out, uh, of course, and said that uh, they're going to have continuing problems. 
this is why when stocks are down uh, and uh, not making real decent lows, uh, you've got to be very, very nervous, especially in these IPOs. They can run out of money in an absolute hurry. Uh, we've got, uh, what, over 100 billion sh or million shares are ready today, uh, and uh, that's uh, larger than the, uh, uh, the uh, gap down from uh, uh, June, what is it, June 26th, July 26th, July 26th. Uh, and uh, that came down on 99 million, yeah, almost 100 million shares. We were way over that already. Uh, people on the infotainment, uh, uh, financial infotainment shows like Bloomberg and CNBC are already saying this is dead. Um, I don't know if you could actually say that. I haven't looked through the books to see how much money they have left, but when you see a stock like that, that's the first thing you want to know. I do know that uh, the Zynga CEO, uh, at the IPO was worth uh, $1.3 billion uh, in, on paper. Uh, today he is uh, worth about $250 million and dropping fast. Um, you know, they just keep on saying that their games are delayed, they're not doing so well. I don't know if they've got enough cash to continue. They, uh, like a lot of these companies that have done poorly, like Groupon, uh, Zynga, uh, some of the other ones like, uh, I'm trying to remember, uh, uh, but uh, a lot of these ones that have not done well after their IPOs, a lot of the people were staying just for that IPO money, and uh, they've uh, taken off and gone to greener pastures. Uh, some have uh, left Facebook, some have left Groupon. Uh, people are leaving Zynga, and unfortunately, uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. But uh, people are calling uh, uh, Zynga uh, the walking dead. In fact, we're going to have to do that whole episode. I've got to Write a note down there for October Halloween episode of Walking Dead Stocks. But, uh, or Dead Man Walking, I guess you could do that. Could do that uh, Green Mile episode. Maybe we'll call it that, the Green Mile. Uh, <laughs> all waiting for the, uh, the uh, hangman's noose or the electrocution. Uh, but uh, anyway, we'll be watching uh, Zynga. Well, in fact, uh, let's see what we have here. Get a current quote, Z-N-G-A. See how they're doing. Da, 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 da. What do we got? Yeah, off 16%. Uh, they were off uh, yeah, down to 221 as the low today. Uh, but uh, we'll continue watching some of these. Maybe, you know, there may be uh, you know, some salvation when this thing not gets down low enough. Uh, maybe you look at it as a non expiring put or a call if they do have enough money uh, to go out there and uh, get it uh, taken care of. Uh, anyway, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. We can discuss your stock. Uh, the other one that really concerns us, uh, probably concerns everybody, it's 10% uh, of the S&P. It's 20% of the NASDAQ. It's the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla, if you remember that uh, uh, from, uh, what was it? Yeah, I think it was the... Uh, Mad Max, Beyond Thunderdome. He's the Ayatollah of rock and roll. Anyway, it's Apple. Off nine bucks again today. Really looks like it's going to try to pull back at least into that uh, 640 range. I suspect on Monday or Tuesday, these, uh, these articles uh, coming out every day about uh, production problems and then them not getting out enough product makes a lot of people think that uh, uh, it's going to be problematic. The other thing that I've been talking about with Apple is these iPad minis will probably start to hurt the uh, gross margins and make it hard to do year-to-year uh, -year comparisons. Uh, they make, uh, you know, for every one iPhone they sell, they're going to have to sell uh, uh, two iPads. They're probably going to have to sell four or five uh, iPad minis. And uh, the the what it does to the overall margin make the, makes the company look uh, less productive. And uh, even though they make more money, it uh, almost always, when margins fall, uh, investors run. And I think what you're seeing is a kind of exit stage left, uh, especially from a lot of these hedge funds that made huge, huge, huge money running this thing up from about 670 uh, are slowly exiting uh, as, quick, as quickly, but orderly as possible with Apple trying to uh, get out the back door without anybody seeing, without their mom catching them and with their hands in the cookie jar. Uh, but it will be a continuing uh, problem. Uh, <laughs> 
So anyway, what else we have going on here? Uh, Zingwen, I want to look at Apple's chart here. We'll go to it real quick. Um, I felt so, when I think brought it up on uh, the Tech Insider Hour last Friday, but uh, uh, two weeks ago on Monday, I did a special report for my Tech Insider where we just looked at the uh, suppliers to uh, Apple, and none of them really looked good. I mean, Arms Holding uh, was one, but when you looked at some of them, uh, they continued to look uh, rather poorly. Um, you know, you could probably, I guess you could look at the low or low from two days ago on Apple and see a little higher volume. This is Friday. Uh, we could be making some kind of a low in here, but uh, I still think this thing has a little bit farther to go, and that's not based on Apple so much as the stocks that supply Apple. We looked at those uh, last week uh, fairly uh, lengthily, and I think oh, maybe even this week. God, I have a hard time keeping these things apart. Uh, but we have Qualcomm. Uh, it's making a nice little uh, hammer up here. If you get a lower open on Monday, you could see this thing easily get back into the uh, $58 range, maybe $59 range. Uh, there's a couple of low volume gaps back there that may uh, come back to. Uh, in fact, the whole uh, SM, uh, NASDAQ marketplace looks extremely weak to me. Um, and uh, in fact, we were talking about that last night uh, with Steve Rhodes. I said, oh boy, you've got to watch this uh, and have a quick finger if you're going to be in NASDAQ stocks right now because a lot of these things could turn in a moment. Uh, the other one, uh, let's see, Skyworks SKWS, uh, if I can type correctly and I can't. So we'll get to that S. K. Is it uh, WS or SW? Hmm. I'll have to look it up. Skyworks Solution uh, is one and uh, trying to think of some of the other ones. Oh, I'll get those during the break. We're coming up on it in a minute. Uh, the other one I wanted to look uh, that we've seen up here trying to test these highs uh, has been IBM. And uh, we wanted to see some kind of volume here uh, as this thing breaks out uh, in the high. It had volume that pulled back right into the trading range uh, as it went through it. Uh, today we've got, uh, again, very uh, light volume. Uh, the previous high was April 3rd uh, with 4 million shares. So you've got some decent volume in that. Um, today we're printing about 1.5 billion shares as it does make a higher high. Uh, yesterday we had about 3 million shares, uh, a little over 3 million shares the day before that. So, you know, you do get the Pierce with volume. Uh, what we are now having today, though, is a retest of that Pierce that didn't stay above the previous high on lighter volume. So a lot of these stocks, IBM, uh, uh, Apple, uh, all showing some major weaknesses uh, coming on as we uh, go in there. So we'd be watching this uh, uh, very interestingly enough um, over this weekend. But uh, you don't, I mean, you want to see some kind of sign of strength. Uh, you normally get about three days. Uh, it pulled back. No real uh, sign of uh, strength. No volume on IBM, so we've got to be watching that very closely. We'll be back in a minute. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, I'm going to get into some stocks that are at least trying to move today somewhat. Um, you know, we see, uh, let me update this right now, see a market that kind of tried to really move up today. Saw a lot of stocks fail uh, around noon. We're up uh, on three on the S&P. Um, I am short in my newsletter. I'm going to continue to be short uh, until something proves me wrong out here. But every time we go up, uh, normally is a good excuse for selling. Uh, we see very, very light volume today. Uh, less than 2 billion shares uh, with, uh, uh, what, an hour and a half to go. So that says uh, eh, kind of, you know, maybe we get a uh, 3.2 billion share on the consolidated New York stock exchange tape today. Uh, nothing to write home about that would continue to try to make these higher highs and lighter volume uh, is very worrisome. Like I said, if you want to be along this market, you better have a fast finger because uh, when this thing, uh, if it does turn, it's going to turn big. And I suspect on the uh, on the uh, NASDAQ side, uh, side, you're going to see uh, the biggest weakness right off the bat. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, stocks like Apple, uh, Netflix that are already cracked, uh, but uh, uh, Priceline, some of these stocks have led all these uh, big movers up. Uh, and uh, we are now seeing a lot of them pull off the highs uh, and uh, pull back. We noticed that uh, also... Uh, when you look at uh, numbers for uh, uh, crude today, uh, that it tried to rally again uh, early in the morning. Uh, it's off uh, almost, a little less, a buck eighty or so. Um, we've got the automatic rally in crude again. Uh, 
if you think Apple is a big part of the S&P, about 10%, 30% of the S&P correlates to the movement of uh, the energy sector. So uh, you always want to be very wary on how uh, the energy sector is moving. Uh, we talked a little bit about this week about uh, it is not uncommon for the Saudis to dump a lot of oil into an election. Uh, they have more than one reason, though. I, did, I probably should have brought it up uh, the other day, and that is that uh, they want to uh, stomp out uh, the Iranians uh, from building a nuclear weapon. And uh, if you've missed it, uh, the Iranian currency uh, in about five days has fallen in half. Uh, they, they're having riots on the street. Uh, it's kind of quieted down a little bit. But I suspect that uh, the, there's several ways of regime change. And uh, in Iran, it may just be that uh, everybody runs out of money. Uh, of course, they're spending a huge amount uh, that they could be using better to educate their people and feed them and uh, build all kinds of things that would be better for the people. Uh, but they're uh, building a nuclear bomb because, of course, kill the Jews is all they can think about, at least the, in the higher-ups, though. Um, and, uh, you know, we saw him come here to the U.N. and say it again. So it's no different than Hitler. He wrote a nice book and told everybody what he was going to do. Uh, we've got somebody that mouths off regularly on what he's going to do. But uh, the question is whether or not it's going to cause enough riot and disruption to kick him out. But uh, the Saudis always do it. They may even be doing a little extra now to throw a little salt in the wound on the Iranians. Uh, of course, uh, Iranians are Persians. And, uh, of course, the Saudis are... Arabs and uh, anybody with any little difference over there has always got an axe to grind. Uh, like a friend of mine says, uh, oh, something happened in the Mideast? Oh, those aren't the people I know. They're the people that are always at peace. It's, uh, you're, it's pretty easy to know that they're having problems. Uh, anyway, I wanted to look at some of the stocks that were moving out here. Uh, and, uh, oh, there was a, uh, actually a comment about the job numbers, that uh, this wasn't much of a, uh, a pop. I actually put it in my newsletter this morning. Uh, there's two numbers, and uh, you know, it's uh, what is it, Q3 and Q6 numbers. Is that right, Q? I think so. Uh, one is uh, the people still looking for work. And uh, the other one is a number of people that don't have full employment. Uh, what we saw in today's numbers was a lot of people getting part-time jobs. A lot of people have two, three part-time jobs instead of a full-time job. Uh, and uh, that's how they're getting by. And part of the, the issue is how many of these people went back to full unemployment. And if you look at the unemployment numbers, almost none. Um, a lot of uh, the movement in the numbers were very low-paying jobs, and that's why uh, a collective sigh of the market for the job numbers. Uh, Part-time jobs numbers count in the, uh, uh, in the Q6 number, uh, and uh, that's the one you want to look at. It's like 14.6 right now uh, for the real unemployment rate that I look at. Uh, the people that are partially employed uh, or not employed at all comes up to 14.6. Those are the people that are still looking for more work or have no work at all. And uh, so when you look at those numbers, uh, and maybe I'll get a chance to, to uh, grab the article um, that I put in the uh, newsletter this morning. Uh, but if not, make sure that you know the difference between those. Uh, the jobs numbers today had uh, mostly to do, uh, well, there are no less, uh, there are no more employed people. Eh, I'll get to it after we come back to the rate. There are not any more employed people, just less people looking. So that's why no one cares. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If 
you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we get back, I'll finish up a little bit uh, of the jobs numbers and why it's getting the Rodney Dangerfield effect, uh, basically uh, getting no respect. And that's, uh, there's the Q3 and the Q6 numbers. Uh, a lot of the people that had, uh, there's no, not a great deal more people employed. A lot of people quit looking. Uh, they fell off the 99 weeks, so they're not, and they're, they, uh, of course, it doesn't do them any good to go to the uh, job bank anymore because they're not going to get any money. So uh, the, the government just doesn't count them. So, so this, uh, you know, it's just not, not the way it truly works. Most of these people uh, that have run off their 99 weeks of unemployment have already gone to um, uh, disability payments or some other form of Social Security or food stamps or all the other stuff that uh, the government provides for its quote, quote, safety net. Uh, but those job numbers weren't uh, kind of very tinily up. Um, and there's a reason why the Fed went and pushed the pedals all the way to the floor, said he's not going to let off of it. And it's not because job numbers were getting better. And it's not because uh, everything else was getting better. Uh, it's because things were getting worse and everybody knows it. Uh, so when we see job numbers like this, um, eh, for the most part, you see the headline number. Uh, but the devil is in the details and everybody knows it. But uh, uh, easy way, you know, during a political event, uh, I imagine both parties do it. So it's, uh, I'm not going to give any blame that uh, uh, if Romney's president in four years, he probably wouldn't do the same thing if it's an issue. Uh, but uh, we will see uh, uh, those numbers, I think, probably investigated a little harsher uh, 
uh, as we go to the evening news, the, the flash number 7.8 sounds really great, but I think a lot of people already know that uh, uh, not a lot of uh, substance in those. I uh, want to look at some stocks moving today. Uh, Monster Energy, uh, we see a lot of these stocks that are uh, heavily short. Uh, MS, uh, is that right? MNST, uh, see to be doing well. Oh, we've got a uh, phone call to saw here. And that's uh, from Mohammed in California. How are you doing today? Good. How are you, David? Great. Wonderful. Glad you enjoyed your concert last night. Oh, it, was a, it was a great time. I have to thank uh, Steve Rhodes again for taking me. I probably wouldn't have gone, but uh, they've got this little theater. You know, Have you ever heard of Eckert's Drugstore? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I used to uh, live on the north end of Clearwater Island, and they have this compound, just like the Kennedys and all those people you hear about the compound. Anyway, they have this nice compound up there on the north end of the island. But she started and made this wonderful, uh, if you ever get down here to Clearwater, she, they put this just wonderful venue together uh, of an amphitheater. And it's uh, free parking, and you know, you've got uh, valet parking, and uh, you've got a lot of people that are retired down here that go to it, but to just an excellent venue, uh, in and out in 10 minutes, uh, no, no spending hours, about a 3,500 seat auditorium, not a bad seat in the house, and uh, excellent, uh, excellent, uh, uh, just wonderful place to uh, go see somebody. I think the best uh, concert I ever saw was in there. Uh, but uh, they got, uh, I think the Eagles coming to it soon and everything else. But it's the Ruth Eckert Hall. But uh, always check that out if you're down here. What, uh, can, what can we talk to you about today? Uh, MasterCard. I, I don't know if you would uh, consider maybe a short position on MasterCard. I, I, was, I was thinking about shorting it. But, you know, when you get a $400, $500 stock, you want to use puts on it. And the only problem I had on it, because I was looking at it, is there was like 100 puts around the, the strikes that we're looking at, uh, and it was just not strong enough. It probably gives me a pretty good indication that uh, you're probably right on going short this thing. Um, normally, I try to find uh, a stock that's got, you know, $480 stock. I like to see, you know, the puts or calls about 1,000 deep uh, around there so that there's some liquidity. Uh, and if I remember right, the, the Novembers, I'll look them up right now, the Novembers were just very thin out there. But I think you're, I think you're on the right side of this. Let me see, where are the options? I mean, you, the, there's a few times when options are much better than actually owning the stock. And very expensive stocks like this that could uh, drop in half uh, give you, you know, your, your odds are very good. Let me see what the... Okay, the November 12th, let's see what we have here on puts. Eh, you got like 356 on that 475, and that's, I'd just like to see it a little bit deeper. You, you know, if you, you could probably go into one of those and not be too bad, but uh, uh, the idea with puts is puts and calls are ways of reducing, reducing risk, not adding it. So you, let's say that you were willing to take a $20 loss for a stop on MasterCard. You'd figure out what that $20 loss was uh, in the equivalent of how much money you would lose in that put and just figure out that you could buy maybe one put or something. So don't act like uh, putting on uh, more risk is what you need to do because the puts are a whole lot less than the $480 stock. But uh, you could get the 475s and eh, they're trading around 15 bucks a little less right now. But then you, you know, you get probably what, uh, you get to get about 45 days, something like that out of them. Um, and I think it's much better because they're either going to break here real quick. Uh, but uh, financials have been some of the weakest stocks out there. So I like it. When you look about it, I've been watching this thing about uh, 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 ever since it's gone above this uh, May 1st, $466.98 high for May 1st, 1 1.7 million shares. You get kind of through it with the same volume, uh, and you normally want to see some volume in the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, the only thing I'd say is the very light volume we see today, if you see, see this thing pull back into that, uh, uh, under that uh, 466, that's, that's where you have to buy the put now, or you have to short the equity when it closes under 466. Okay. 
So well, I don't know. I don't know which one you'd be more likely to do, but uh, it is. Um, it, I'm just, you know, you've got a day that you did have a, a fairly nice bar. It did go above it, and it closed above it. You would like to see a lot more volume. So I'm going to almost say that there's probably maybe a better play out there than MasterCard at the moment. But I see what you're looking at, and I was watching it the same. All right. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, David. You have bet. a wonderful weekend. You okay. too. Bye-bye. Uh, let's see what else we have going here. Uh Oh, oh, I want to look at some. We were going to look at Monster, uh, M-N-S-T, uh, Monster Energy, uh, one of the bigger movers out here today. Again, not a lot of volume. Um, this looks like it wants to try to go back up. Um, just like everything else I've been showing this week, uh, a lot of these stocks have been hammered down on very high volume. Uh, they look like they're going to go back. Uh, this one looks like it wants to try to get back to $61.58. If it did, uh, the volume is telling you everything you need to look at. If you're watching Tiger TV right now, it's a uh, at least a nice... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a black, but it's getting awful close to a, a black ski slope down of volume uh, as we go out here, uh, and especially the last few days, since this thing kind of petered around and went higher. Um, I would say you've got a higher volume low uh, than the previous low down at uh, $50.19. Um, this A lot of these are just uh, pops. And you see this in highly short markets, even though uh, being short may be the right thing to do, it is also a lot more volatile when you have markets that are highly short. Uh, we see a lot of stocks that are part of the living dead, um, like Apollo, another one that's popped up here today. Uh, but again, uh, these are stocks that are, I, I go check Apollo again, but I think last time I looked at it, it's 50% or more short. Um, they're just waiting for the inevitable, which is, uh, you know, Month by month, this thing is going to probably go out of business unless uh, the government changes its rules on lending uh, for a lot of these online and uh, uh, for-profit educational facilities. Uh, but, uh, you know, you see these pops, uh, not a whole lot of volume. Uh, they're going sideways. Um, you know, will there be a change in these educational facilities? I would say not. Pretty much everybody knows that they've been scams for a while. Uh, Dell's up on a nice little pop, but uh, really wouldn't say that there's much there. Uh, Dollar Tree, D-L-T-R. And let's see what we're seeing in that. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Again, uh, a lot of these are just slight up moves on light volume. Uh, in fact, Dollar Tree might be very interesting. This thing has a nice little trend line going for it, and uh, you're we're going to be right up back to it probably Monday morning, I suspect. Uh, it has just a little bit farther to go, uh, but I could see this moving. Another one that's uh, uh, come off off the highs fairly strongly, uh, but uh, this is a nice little distribution pattern here. Uh, probably going to find out the bad news in this one day uh, and find out that uh, it is uh, uh, going to pop down fairly strongly. Let's see if anything else we have here. Uh, Texas Instruments, eh, one. Well, a lot of these are just uh, not huge movers. Uh, Green Mountain again, uh, G-M-C-R. Uh, it's always in the uh, top or bottom of our scan every day of NASDAQ 100 stocks. Uh, this certainly looks like it's going to go back, like as we've been talking about, to this high volume gap up. Um, and if you were really thinking that this was going to be a great company, I warn you against it. But the chart is actually not so bad if this thing comes back in to about the $19 mark and tests it on lighter volume. My guess is even if it does, it's going to consolidate for a while. So probably not something you want to buy right away. Uh, but you see uh, kind of a pattern where people were buying it uh, uh, from about the uh, what uh, June 16th through... Uh, the 1st of July, uh, and you really see a, uh, a lot of that uh, accumulation there, good pattern, popped up on high volume, uh, but it's moving all the way back down here, and I suspect you're going to see 19 bucks on this uh, fairly soon, and at that point, we can start seeing whether this thing is going to be something we want to buy ever. FFIV is another one, uh, a little volatile little trader out here. It is also coming back down. Uh, looks like it's, uh, at best, you could probably say this thing is doing an ABC move, uh, but it really didn't do uh, enough of a retracement 
um, that I was looking for. He almost got there. I wanted a 50% retracement on this thing, and it actually dismissed because I wanted to get it up at here at uh, a nice gap uh, that's about 117, made it up to about 111.58 uh, on uh, September 18th, and it started to roll over from then. Uh, but uh, you have a, a decent uh, a amount of uh, volume, uh, probably right around in the 96, 98 area. I suspect that uh, FFIV, F5 Networks is going back on that. Citrix Systems, uh, CTXS, is another one that's uh, doing uh, uh, actually kind of a little engulfing of yesterday's pattern. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, actually, fairly nice. Got up to the gap again. Of course, there's another one going to these high volume gaps and rolling over fairly quickly. I uh, came down on 7.6 with 4.4 uh, uh, 4 million shares. Got back up to it with uh, about 50%. September 21st, got up with uh, 2.6 million shares. Uh, and rolled right over gap down the next day. Uh, looks like it's headed to $68.17. Let's see what we got. Oracle, uh, actually, ORCL, probably more of an issue of uh, stocks uh, as this um, with uh, Apple being weak and some of the other, Intel, Microsoft, a lot of these uh, coming off the top. Uh, no volume yet, but several gaps to uh, come back. Oracle may be very interesting in here, and I will, I will say the one reason is uh, why they've had a very nice move from 25 up to 3329 uh, over the last few months. The CEO, uh, Ellison, finally said that he's going to spend a couple of years without uh, doing any acquisitions. Over the last uh, two, three years, he spent almost $40 billion acquiring other companies. Uh, finally, he says that he's pretty much done acquiring them. It's time for those country, uh, country, uh, companies to start growing. Um, and I like this thing. Maybe if it got back down, uh, if it could get back down to the uh, uh, $28 mark over time, I suspect uh, you might have a nice trade from about 28 back up to that 33 over time. I suspect we're going to get a decent pullback in these markets uh, and it may last into Christmas or maybe right after Christmas uh, and uh, until they actually get the uh, fiscal cliff taken care of, as they say. Uh, but uh, let's see. We'll go back here and look at our volume. We've got a, just about a minute before the break. Uh, 2.1 billion shares, so uh, still fairly quiet out here, up a dollar and a half on the S&P uh, cash. And so, you know, it's going to be a very quiet day. We went to a much higher high on lighter volume. Uh, we've been getting these sell signals now for a while. And like I said, I'd be very wary if you want to be long any of these stocks. Um, and uh, there's some really sweet ones out there. So uh, just keep an eye on them. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I would say the preponderance, especially the NASDAQ stocks, look significantly weaker than the ones in the S&P at the moment. Uh, so we will uh, continue to watch that. Again, give me a call at 877-927-6648. That's 877-927-6648. We'll be glad to take your call. Remember, 50 years of the Beatles today. Hmm. I didn't really start listening to him to, until I was probably in the... I was in the 70s, so they pretty much were over by when I started really appreciating uh, uh, popular music. But uh, got a chance to. We'll talk about that when we come back. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Managing your money is a business, and I want you to succeed in any economic environment. The markets are changing fast, and if you do the right thing at the wrong time, you'll have your head handed to you. But if you do the right thing at the right time, the rewards are extraordinary. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, and I have a roadmap that will guide you and give you the flexibility of change. To succeed in these markets, you need a competitive advantage. And for one solid day, I'll teach you the language called Japanese candlestick charting. Without it, you're dead meat. With it, you have an unfair advantage. Learn the techniques that provide you the strategy for entering and exiting a trade, plus learn the best trading patterns in the business. It's not enough to do the right thing. You've got to do it at the right time. Join me October 19th for our one-day online course, Candlesticks, Silent Signals, and the Speed of Trust. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up today, because an unfair advantage is a great thing to have. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, still looking at this market, see if uh, anything's happening. And, you know, we've got a nice little move out here. We're getting ready to go red on the S&P, if we haven't already. Um, and, uh, you know, the volume, just uh, very, very light, One, uh, 2.1 billion shares. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, with an hour to go, I'm going to project out to about 2.7, 2.8 billion shares. You don't want to get into these high levels without any volume. Um, and especially you know, a lot of people are very sh uh, afraid to be short these days. Uh, but we've got a lot of stocks out here that are making previous uh, highs, retesting highs, again on even lighter volume than they did, uh, you know, a week ago. And uh, you want to be very, uh, very careful. A lot of these uh, technology stocks are not looking all that great. Uh, some of them look a little bit better, uh, but a lot of them well off their highs, like Intel. Uh, and uh, Microsoft, uh, a lot of people are, I think, uh, probably getting into that election fear, at least a little bit of the unknown. And, uh, you know, they made some good money on it. Why not take a little off the table? Uh, we continue to discuss uh, on the show uh, the confluence levels, and uh, you should be checking these out fairly uh, uh, regularly. But uh, the, you can uh, uh, pretty much see, let me see, let me get them here. Uh, that uh, confluence level in the chart I'm doing now, if you're watching Tiger TV. Uh, but you've got a very narrow t confluence range, and that comes right in at about uh, 1350, and that's going to be my target for any big uh, pullback. I suspect we've gone up 
so long that this getting a 50% retracement, which wouldn't be anything, that would be a normal retracement in a marketplace on the way up. So this is not saying that the wheels are falling off the wagon. This is just saying just a normal ABC pattern on the way back up would take you back into that 13. Now normally you don't get a very nice uh, real fine uh, trading range set up by these confluence levels. They're very wide and uh, they don't tend to be very strong. But what you can do, especially if you're watching Tiger TV, is see just how well these confluence levels are setting up on the S&P. Uh, if you've got them over time, like uh, we're seeing uh, the actual uh, November 21st, the start of the first uh, Fibonacci retracement, uh, and uh, you know you, the second one starts on June 4th. Um, but uh, this sets up a range between the uh, 618 of our yeah. Uh, three one eight of one to the six eight one of the other, and that uh, uh, makes a very tiny range and normally a pretty good indication of very very strong support or resistance depending on if they're on the way up or down. Don't talk a lot about confluence probably over the last two years on TFNN because there hasn't been a really good setup, especially on the indexes. But uh, we've got one on the S and P, uh, and I would be short. Uh, this market, as long as it doesn't have any, uh, uh, if it doesn't have a breakout here with any kind of volume, uh, I would say that we probably easily want to be looking at that 1350 level uh, as just a standard retracement in a market uh, that could continually start back up. But I suspect it's going to be fast, it's going to be scary, and nobody's going to want to buy this market when it gets back to 1350. If it has high volume, you don't want to either. But uh, if it's got light volume, I'll be looking at that 1350 and a nice uh, possible uh, ABC backup, which would be just a one-to-one -one would be what? Uh, that's almost 200 points. So uh, uh, that could take you from 1350 to 1550. Uh, let's say that we have a bad two weeks. We get back down to 1350. Uh, could we have a Christmas run up to 1550? I think it's possible. I just don't like this market here on very light volume. You all have a safe and wonderful weekend. I will be back at 520 Eastern Time for the Tech Insider Hour with Tom O'Brien. And if you want to hear about how to turn something that's not gold into gold, just like the alchemists of uh, all the uh, folklore, uh, tune in at 522 evening because we're going to be making uh, water into gold.